guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. Here's your girl Emma. And I know you guys just love that beginner friendly sewing tutorial. So here I am making another one. Even though this time we do need to spend a little time on pattern making, but I promise you the pattern making process is just super easy. It won't take you more than five, six, well, let's say 10. It won't take you more than 10 minutes. Okay, so first we need to do some preparation for that. Uh, I want you to wear something just like me, a really tight top. And for the bottom, it can be a little loose because the dress we're making is backless. So the top size won't be a problem. But for the bottom, we do need to walk, sit, and most importantly, we need to eat. So we do need to have some extra space for that. Other than that, you also need to have a tape measure and some paper so we can start drafting the pattern. The first thing to do is to find the side seams of your outfit, which are the reference line for our measurements. And then also draw a straight line on paper, which will be the center front. Then measure your front waistline from one side seam to the other. Then divide the number in the half and draw the straight line on paper. Then measure the distance from the waistline to the hip line to decide where the hip line is. Then measure the front hip line and divide it in half and draw a straight line on paper. You know the drill. Finally, measure from the waistline to the bust line and use the same method to decide the position and the length of the front bust line. Then connect the three points, decide how long the skirt that you want and smooth out the corner of the waist point. And here's the front pattern. Then use the same method to draw the back pattern. Here, I extend the center front line and draw a rectangle on it. I divide the rectangle into four parts, which are the four pleats. The last part being a little wider because this one will also be used as front facing. Then I cut out both the front and back patterns and put them together along the side seams. Then draw a curved line on the back pattern to connect to the front pattern and cut off the excess paper. Now that our patterns have been created, we can start cutting the fabric. I know that most of the time the slip dresses are made of shiny and smooth fabric like silk or satin, but for this time I want to introduce you guys my favorite summer fabric, which is this viscose and linen blend. Look at this. This fabric retains that natural, almost rough texture of linen, which is very breathable and refreshing, perfect for summer. And thanks to the added viscose, it's also very soft and draped just smoothly. So it's perfect for the slip dresses. And if you're looking for an alternative to cotton fabric, I also highly recommend you this fabric. Well, that's all the introduction that I want to make. Now let's cut the fabric. For this dress, we need to cut the fabric on the bias. So I take the selvage and fold the fabric to let it meet the cross grain of the fabric. Then I just place a front pattern on the fold and then cut. Remember also to add the seam allowance all around the pattern. Repeat the same steps for the back pattern. I have two meters of fabric this time, but it's just about enough. As you can see, I have to cut the back pattern one piece at a time in order to make the most of every centimeter of the fabric. So if you also want to make this dress, it is best to prepare at least 2.5 meters of fabric to be safe. Finally, we can start sewing. First, let's deal with the front panel. As you can see, I set four pleats on each side of the front chest. And now we're going to fold the three of them. And the top one for now, let's just leave it there. Actually, no matter how many pleats you have set aside, the last one should always be left until the end. Then we just do the straight stitch on the side. Well, I don't know how to explain it due to my poor English expression ability, but you will figure it out later. Then I add a piece of fabric to the front panel because my front facing is a little too short. And the reason why I didn't cut the pattern longer from the beginning is that it takes more fabric to cut the patterns out on the bias. And my fabric is merely enough. You can try to make the pattern longer though, but it would definitely create more waste and it's kind of unnecessary. The seam will be unseen anyway. Then I fold the facing inward at the neckline, noticing that I didn't fold it right next to the pleat. 
Instead, I keep some fabric that is as wide as a pleat. And this will be the last pleat. Well, technically, it's not a pleat, but it looks like a pleat. And I'm saying lots of pleat. Then I pin the fabric and cut off the extra fabric on the side. This way we have a complete piece of front facing. Once the preparation of the front panel is done, we can assemble the dress. I place the front and the back panels right sides facing each other and then sew the side seams together. Now let's cut the back facing. Keep in mind that it also has to be cut on the bias. And then I trim the bottom edge to a smooth rounded curve. Then it's ready to be attached. So now let's put the dress like so. And here is the front opening and the under is the skirt. And here is front facing. So now let's just put the back facings on. Now let's just stitch the sides. As you can see, the joints between the front and the back facings are not quite rounded, so I trim the front facing to make sure the bottom edge is a smooth curve. It's not necessary, but it's satisfying. Well, let's put the dress aside. Now I cut two strips of fabric at least one meter long for the shoulder straps. I fold it in half and sew. Then use a safety pin or loop turner to turn it right side out. Then I put the shoulder straps at the front neckline and stitch them down. I also made loops for the back, you know, to loop the shoulder strap through it instead of just sewing the straps down. This way, you can also adjust the length of the shoulder straps more easily. Then we should have something looks like this. Now we can finally sew the facing and the outer dress together. I fold the entire facing over and sew along the side. This is also where you need to adjust the width of the neckline. If your neckline is too wide, you can move the seam allowance inwards and adjust the angle until it fits. Trust me, it's much easier to do this now than to narrow the neckline with the pleats from the beginning. Then I just iron all the edges nice and flat, and we can finally face our final task, the invisible zipper. I know invisible zippers are every sewing lover's worst nightmare, especially for beginners, but it's also a very important part of the process and is essential whenever you want to make a garment that fits you very well. So sooner or later you need to face this challenge. So why not today? In today's video I will show you step by step how I installed my invisible zipper and I hope you can overcome this challenge with me. First, let's sew the center back closed, but do not sew it all the way up to the waist. We need a small opening for the zipper, and make sure this opening is a bit shorter than the zipper that you're going to use. To put the zipper, first let's turn the dress round side out, and place the zipper head under the seam line of the back facing. Then pin the zipper and the opening right sides together. This method is by far the easiest one that I've found. You have to keep the zipper closed all the time so that you can stop the fabric from misaligning. Before we sew, we need to change the presser foot. And this is the one that I want to use. Oops, sorry. This is the most convenient presser foot that I've ever used for invisible zipper. If you do not have it, you can also use a regular one. They work the same. Then I put a side of the zipper under the presser foot and start sewing. The only downside of this presser foot is that even if I lift it, it cannot let the zipper head pass through it. So I have to take the whole zipper away and close it, then put it back to sew. Then repeat the same steps to the other side. And ta-da, what a perfect invisible zipper. Now finish the last step, the back facing, and we're done. The step is very simple. You just need to open the zipper and then sew the facing and the zipper edge together. However, remember that you also need to use the zipper presser foot for this. And finally, I just hem the raw edge by folding it twice and the dress is finished.
Because this is a beginner friendly video, I try to explain every detail as much as possible. So it seems a bit tedious, but I still hope you guys can enjoy it and learn something new. And I highly recommend you try this dress. I was glowing that day. No joke, definitely top 3 of my collection. Well, time to say goodbye. If you like my content, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel. So, see you next time!